Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. St. Lucia takes steps to address the economic welfare and social well-being of involuntary returning migrants. The OECS lands a University of the West Indies campus, using tourism as an economic development tool. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports, and the NTN Nouvelle Arquion. The government of St. Lucia is taking steps to address the economic welfare and social well-being of involuntary returning migrants. Through the African, Caribbean and Pacific ACP EU Migration Action Program, the Department of Home Affairs and National Security was presented with technical assistance products in support of involuntary returning migrants. The ACP EU Migration Program, funded by the European Union, provides technical assistance to African, Caribbean, and Pacific groups of states. The program, which is being implemented by the International Organization for Migration, provides assistance on five thematic areas of migration, remittances, visa, readmission, trafficking human beings, and smuggling of migrants. On Wednesday, June 26, a draft national policy and plan of action in support of involuntary returning migrants to St. Lucia and a case management database on readmission and reintegration of these migrants were presented to the Department of Home Affairs and National Security. Jermaine Grant is the program officer for the Caribbean ACP EU Action of the International Organization for Migration. The ministry posited, that being the Ministry of Home Affairs, Justice and National Security, in their technical assistance request to the program, that involuntary return migrants, as mentioned often called deportees, are challenged because of societal perceptions and stereotypes that compound some forms of stigma and discrimination against them. The results are IRMs, involuntary return, migrant, involuntary return migrants, encounter difficulties during the reintegration pro process, irrespective of whether they had familial, familial connections in St. Lucia and irrespective of their ability to provide for themselves and dependents. Grant said that the draft policy and plan of action should serve as St. Lucia's international commitment on migration management in the context of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, notably Target 10.7, which commits states to facilitate orderly, safe, regular and responsible migration and mobility of people. A migration expert with the International Organization for Migration presented some of the data. So what we know about that, it's like 64% of those are coming from France and mainly from Martinique. But it's important to highlight uh, there's a quite a significant portion coming from the Caribbean, which is 9%. That speaks about when we look at uh, the regional, uh, on the region and, and also the regional treaties of free movement. It's important to take consideration of that. And, um, and in terms of the reasons of those readmissions, it's important to highlight that 77% are related to immigration violations. And this is very important because uh, soon or later, the government will be able also to illustrate that, that probably 70% of those people will be interested to integration. St. Lucia recognizes the need for available data of a policy, standard operating procedures, and general guidance on the issues of readmission and reintegration of involuntary returning migrants, which will contribute to their socio-economic integration. Come September, the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, OECS, will be home to its first landed campus of the University of the West Indies, UWE. OECS member state Antigua and Barbuda will be home to the fourth landed UWE campus, Five Islands. The announcement was made by the UWE's Vice Chancellor, Professor Sir Hilary Beckles, during a press conference at the university's first campus at Mona, Jamaica. I am honored to report that Chancellor Mr. Robert Bermudez and the Council of the University of the West Indies have formally approved the establishment of a campus of the University of the West Indies in Antigua and Barbuda within the wider context of the country's membership of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States. Antigua and Barbuda's Five Islands campus is set to open its doors in September of 2019 and welcome some 800 students. The majority of these 800 students are already registered in levels one and two of University of the West Indies programs 
currently being delivered in Antigua and Barbuda under a franchise agreement at the Antigua State College and other tertiary institutions. Like its sister campuses at Mona, St. Augustine, Cave Hill, and the Open Campus, the Five Islands Campus will begin in a modest fashion and will no doubt rise to magnificent heights in the years to come. According to Sir Beckles, it is left to all within the region to be meaningful contributors to the growth of an important Caribbean institution. Our solidarity is now required more than ever as we build a new campus befitting the excellence of the University of the West Indies. With this action, the people of our region, the youth especially, will be better served. And that was UE's Vice Chancellor, Professor Sir Hilary Beckles. A tourism luminary from the Bahamas has emphasized how tourism can be used as an economic development tool. Vincent Wallace Vanderpool engaged participants at a recently opened symposium centered on tourism. The strategy, he says, should involve the citizenry and seek to develop a product of excellence. Janelle Norville reports. The words shared by guest speaker, former Minister for Tourism in the Bahamas, and former Secretary General and CEO of the Caribbean Tourism Organization, Vincent Vanderpool Wallace, helped shape the conversation for the two day National Tourism Symposium. The objectives included presenting preliminary findings of the consultancy underway to review and update the St. Lucia Tourism Benchmarking and Competitiveness Assessment Strategy and Action Plan and to discuss new and emerging trends that might contribute to the growth and development in tourism in St. Lucia and to determine the best positioning for the island's marketing. Vanderpool Wallace indicated that one must firstly understand that tourism is an economic development tool. And when we start talking about the economic development tool, what we are talking about also, what are the objectives of tourism? What are the critical ones? The critical ones are, number one, is foreign exchange. We're in the business to continue to grow our foreign exchange. Number two, we're in the business of growing employment. The third thing is broadening the distribution of income. You gotta make sure that you're getting the broadest possible distribution of income coming into the economy, because if you don't do that, you're gonna find that a lot of people are saying, you keep talking about this thing, I ain't feeling it. And what is very important is people begin to feel the effects of tourism throughout what you're doing. The next thing is talking about better linkages. Minister referred to this already. Critically important in terms of making sure that you're establishing those linkages. And then of course, uh, one of the things that Carolyn will talk about all the time is in terms of sustainability and the focus, particularly relating to the environmental issues. And making sure that we are addressing those things as much as we possibly can. Also on the agenda, the formulation of new directions for sustainable tourism development in St. Lucia, while strengthening and improving on current initiatives that are of relevance. Vanderpool Wallace noted that one such initiative should include the sensitization of the citizenry on the importance of the island's tourism sector. Such an awareness is important as visitors interact more with citizens of the country, and if that interaction is good, it can have great benefits for the country. He also highlighted the importance of offering a good tourism product and the power of a recommendation. If people intend to recommend you, we have found the highest correlation between recommendation and people delivering value. Because in very many respects, one of the problems with people with warm weather destinations is they're island collectors. No matter how great the experience was on one island, they tend to go to other places. Or people have bucket lists. I want to go to other places. What you really want them to do is to recommend the experience that they had here to other people and their friends and relatives. That's the most powerful thing. And make sure we are looking at that number on an ongoing basis. And if we are not measuring these things on an ongoing basis, going back to the minister's point about data, if you're not measuring these things, you can't possibly know whether you're succeeding. The National Tourism Symposium commenced on Wednesday, 26 June and culminated on Thursday, 27 June, 2019. For the Government Information Service, I am General Norville. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. When the authority of the heads of government of the OECS and its other ministerial councils meet and adopt policies for the organization, they rely on the OECS Commission to transform these into action. The OECS Commission is the Secretariat of the organization, a grouping of officials headed by a Director General, mandated to implement the decisions of the governments but also empowered to make recommendations on the strategic directions of the organization. The OECS Commission organizes meetings, 
prepares budgets, conducts research, undertakes projects, negotiates for and represents the OECS member states. It is organized along several components. There are the commissioners from each member state who along with the Director General form the commission that oversees the work programs. There are also technical divisions with specialized units between them as well as diplomatic missions in Brussels and Geneva. All these complement each other to make the OECS Commission the engine of regional integration in the Eastern Caribbean. The OECS has a proud past and together we are working towards a brighter future for all our citizens. For more information, visit www.oecs.org. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Thanks, Misha. I'm Ryan O'Brien and welcome once again to your update from Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. The annual CARICOM 10K road race on Sunday will showcase the Caribbean's top long-distance runners and includes a 5K run walk from Marisil for secondary school students and a 1K for CARICOM diplomats and other dignitaries. Members of the public are invited to show their support for the road races which start from 7.30 a.m. Interested persons and groups can register at the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports to participate in the CARICOM 10K road race. CARICOM Secretary General Ambassador Erwin Larocque will co-host a forum with the St. Lucia Youth Ambassadors, McAllister Hunt and Izibi Francis, to discuss current issues of significance to upcoming leaders and young activists around the region. The forum will begin from 5 p.m. on July 1st and carried live via social networks and electronic media. Final arrangements are falling into place for Friday's staging of the annual School Sports Awards scheduled for the St. Mary's College Auditorium. The Ministry of Youth Development and Sports has announced that awards will be granted in both individual and team categories and announced that this year a special new award will go to the outstanding district in primary school sports. Students will also be vying for the prestigious titles of Outstanding Student Sports Personality of the Year, male and female, as well as other overall team prizes. Friday's awards are set to get underway at 10 a.m. And that's all from Move Development and Sports for today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. Quarantine Awareness Week is being observed under the theme Safeguard St. Lucia's Agriculture, Don't Pack a Pest. According to the Agriculture Minister, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, agriculture continues to be one of the major contributing sectors to the economy and must continue to be so if St. Lucia is to ensure food and nutrition security for itself. He says although there are increases in production of bananas, fruits, vegetables, root crops, poultry, small ruminants and pork, the agricultural sector is challenged by a number of issues. The constant threat of the introduction, establishment, and spread of pests and diseases can be viewed as one of the major challenges. This has been given top priority as a changes in global trade, coupled with the increased movement of people in a changing climate has also inadvertently increased the movement of pests and diseases. Over the years, the invasion of many pests and diseases has severely affected agricultural production, causing changes in production methods, loss of production, increased cost of production. Quarantine Awareness Week aims to educate St. Lucians on their role in safeguarding the country's agriculture sector and its borders and to launch the Don't Pack a Pest initiative. The government of St. Lucia continues to put measures in place to emphasize and ensure sanitary and phytosanitary requirements that are adhered to. It is the hope of adopting a common standardized health approach to achieve good agricultural health, food safety and security and by extension, promoting good public health. In closing, I wish to advise all travelers to be mindful 
of the potential danger of bringing in animals, plants, and their products from abroad without the necessary permit, as they can pose a serious threat to our agriculture and socio-economic well-being. The St. Lucia Tourism Authority, SLTA, hosted its first ever Global PETA Awards for the top producing St. Lucia expert travel agents from the United States, Canada, the United Kingdom, and Ireland. The agents were celebrated June 20th through June 24th with an immersive weekend showcasing the best that the island has to offer. Travel advisors who booked more than 300 room nights between March 2018 and March 2019 were recognized at the 2019 Global Peter Awards. The room nights booked were measured for the St. Lucia Expert Slex program, created in partnership with Recommend Magazine. The SLEX program is a comprehensive free membership program and educational resource for travel advisors interested in selling St. Lucia to their clients at an expert level. The top 31 winners were honored with the prestigious award. Tonight, our job is really very simple. We just want to say thank you. Thank you to all of you for believing in our destination, for sending your people to our shores and for really um, telling people that St. Lucia is an incredible place for them to come. I want to say a big thank you to all of you. The recipients include 15 winners from the United States, five winners from Canada, 10 winners from the United Kingdom and Ireland. St. Lucia Tourism Authority's Senior Marketing Manager, Jackie Mathre, highlighted the importance of travel agents to the industry. We share an appreciation for how rapidly and profoundly that world travel is evolving. And we truly appreciate the work that you have been doing. And there really is no absolute dollar amount that can be placed on your proven commitment to our destination. Your efforts have not only contributed to the awareness of this beautiful island, but have significantly contributed to our record-breaking year in 2018, and 2018 with over 1.2 million visitors. This reflects a 10.2% increase over the previous year. Thank you, and it's all because of you. Global Award winners got an opportunity to explore the island. They also were treated to an island party and a day of pampering at Pigeon Island. For the Government Information Service, I am General Norville. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Novel Arqueol. Small household electrical appliances, when faulty, can give rise to big problems. If you have just purchased a small appliance from a store and you are concerned about the safety of the item, or an appliance has been at home for some time subjected to wear and tear from regular usage, have it tested by the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards. It is better to be safe than sorry. For more information, contact the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards at 456-0546 or email slbs at candw.lc or visit the website at www.slbs.org.lc. St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, making quality and standards our way of life. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arqueum. Merci, Ota, Nisha. Monsieur, Madame, Département qui est responsable pour l'information au gouvernement cette le ça c'est GIS, à ce moment Télévision Nationale, puis à NTN, qui a posé au Nouvelle Arqueum. Presidente Primus Hutchinson, Ministro que vos conselhos por segurança nacional e café polícia te juntam recentemente para discutir uma situação que tu é crítica para o país. É que se se cantarem as situações se que as autoridades em grande parte que a vêm viver se que se porque eu tive o culpado por diversos crimes. Segundo a ESP Louis Gale Clark que vos conselhos por divisão especial especial branch a organização polícia se que se situação é lá se juntam que cada chefe do governo et la police s'est laissée en pile, parce que ces individus sont souvent qui ont payé cette laissée pour plus de 30 et plus de l'année. Et par conséquent, j'ai pas de connexion et la famille et la commune qui ont habité avant, et malgré qu'ils ont pu changer la commune qui ont été restée, mais pour si tellement longtemps, ils n'ont pas qu'à reconnaître l'expérience là qui ont été ni avant, ils ont quitté cette laissée. Madame Clark déclare que ce qui a fait présentement, c'est pour les autorités pays à chercher en qui meilleure façon pour aider ces gens à la vie établie en pays. Dans les gens qui sont entrés par les portes, nous avons dit qui est ce qui a fait tel monde ça, qui est ce qui est ici, qui est ce 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 qui
et nou ka isa ki assistance yo pou brise sa ki ka fèt atwolman sa mwen sa de ki te ka fèt se dat moun sa te ka antwe et polis e belot sikyor moun sikyoriti a swe pou te ka e pale se moun sa 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 ka fèt yo et den yo a lay fè sa fè yo et si pou a jan sikyoriti sa sa afford ti sa yo te kay bay men sa program sa ka e fe i ka yen ekoz set li si pou an opozisyon dat lese moun sa antwe apwe sekuriti ha di le ti yo non ni organizasyon ko social transformation ki ka isa ende yo yo sa bay yo petet sa sa ka fe tet yo ache to avay bay yo hausin fe kay bay yo et asiste yo an plizye lot manye Special Branch, c'est la division police qui est responsable pour, principalement pour conduire l'investigation à la sécurité nationale de la mauvaise crime. Les représentatifs de divers départements et gouvernements ont trouvé étonnement à ce manière pour planer affaires financières pour former un homme en pays qui n'a pas trouvé des grands assistants pour les autres. Le département et gouvernement qui n'a pas de responsabilité pour la situation a établi un projet pour aider à adresser toutes ces la brise c'est mon sala en parmi ça qui est plus nécessaire c'est pour établir et bien créer une meilleure égalité en parmi ces femmes et hommes sala pour essayer de corriger le problème de l'éducation en parmi les hommes pour procurer plus d'employement et d'étonnement et pour aussi essayer de courager la situation côté qui n'y a pas un système seulement qui n'y a responsabilité pour les affaires dans le cas. Coordinateur pour le projet sala, Claudia Louis, dit que comme ça c'est un web des gouvernements et qu'ils suivent le même principe. Ces divers départements qui ont suivi, ils ont préparé le budget en septembre pour octobre. Alors, ils ont déjà une qualité d'étudiement pour examiner ces projets là et ils ont dit que la façon dont ces problèmes là qui existent, Go Greg qui était à cette liste, il a tenu plusieurs en mois de mai pour commencer à étudier. Et ça, c'est les officiers du département, le département de ça, et aussi les services civils, ces divers ministères du département et agences pour développer ces plans là. Le ministère qui est responsable pour affaires touristiques et informations qui a tenu des jours atelier en bas de thème la direction nouveau pour affaires touristiques à cette ici. Selon le secrétaire permanent du ministère des Affaires touristiques à Vivre saint clair l'initiative de cela, c'est pour développer une meilleure direction pour le développement des affaires touristiques à PIA. Le secrétaire permanent a annoncé que le ministère a travaillé la main en la main et puis qu'on de Ville Castri pour procurer assistance finance pour improuver la Ville Castri. Le ministère a aussi engagé les consultants pour procurer façon façons pour improuver tout toi en ville, à la ville Castri et William Peter Boulevard. Il a aussi fait un arrangement avec le ministère pour des affaires de construction et travaux pour ranger et établir meilleures lumières pour contrôler le trafic à ville Castri. Le ministre qui a une responsabilité pour affaires touristiques, honorable Dominique Fede, regrette l'absence de assez d'informations concernant le développement du business touristique à cette ci Si l'honorable Fede, ça a très nécessaire. Pour une manière de développement business touristique qui a aidé l'économie du pays, il dit qu'il est facile pour que les choses ne soient pas mais tout ça qui est bon pour finir le programme. Il y a un gros grec qui a fait l'industrie touriste, Vincent Van Poul, déclaré que c'est aussi plus avancé par plusieurs pays en région. Mais c'est aussi seulement, c'est pas seulement le cas de passer sur l'industrie touriste. Là. Il s'est joué pour placer en l'eau plus force à son industrie touristique en cette ci et c'est comme ça nous avons une nouvelle là. Je vous remercie autant pour garder mon invité au projet. Et puis, je vous conseille de conserver la vie. Je vous présente une autre nouvelle à Creole. Après ça, je vous présente au Michel. Merci, on pile Primus. Et here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Moisture and instability associated with a weak tropical wave will cause some cloudy periods with showers over the Lesser Antilles during the next 24 hours. Another tropical wave located over the central tropical Atlantic is moving westward near 23 miles per hour or 37 kilometers per hour. This wave is expected to affect the southern part of the Lesser Antilles on Friday into Saturday. A tropical wave located over the far eastern tropical Atlantic is moving westward at about 23 miles per hour or 37 kilometers per hour. Tropical cyclone formation is not expected over the tropical Atlantic during the next five days. The tides for Castries Harbour was low at 5.06 p.m. 
and will be high at 11.43 p.m. The tides for Viewfort Bay was high at 12.59 p.m. and was low at 6.33 p.m. The seas are moderate to locally rough with waves 5 to 7 feet or 1.5 to 2.1 meters. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise caution due to brisk winds and above normal seas. The sun will rise Friday at 5.38 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Misha Charles.